this is Kara Waxman, founder of Retail MBA. Today I want to talk about Dick's Sporting Goods. The reason I decided to create this particular training is because I've taught tens of thousands of business owners across the globe on how to generate revenue with physical products at major chain stores, online retailers, small retailers, catalogs, and so forth. And Dick's Sporting Goods come up all the time in my workshops and classes. And so I just wanted to give you some things to think about in regards to that retailer. So some of you guys have Sporting Good products and you're looking for places to sell your products. Sporting Goods is a big audience, big market, and Dix is a, is a major player there. They have, as of recent, 670 stores or so. Um, they're selling you know, lots of different products. Um, they sell a lot more than Sporting Goods, by the way, consumer electronics, all sorts of different things, clothing and, and so forth. So don't ignore retailers like that, right? Um, just because you can, they have Sporting Goods in the title, they could have an opportunity to purchase your product, even if it's not in that particular category. Anyways, the thing about Dix is, um, you know, it's a, it's a major destination. A lot of sporting goods companies want to sell to them because they do that. That's their entire business and so forth. The problem with working with Dix is that every single sporting goods company is trying to reach out to them. Every one of them. It's just like Best Buy. If you have a consumer electronics product, you're going to go and try to reach out to Best Buy. Dix is one of those retailers that a lot of sporting goods companies are just going to want to try and sell into. So what do you do when that happens? Well, the one thing I want to tell you is that you may get rejected by Dix and it may have nothing to do with your product. Not that you shouldn't go after them, but just be aware that if everybody wants to sell to a major player in that particular category, that might mean that they've seen everything out there and Maybe they're just not willing to take the risk on your product. That doesn't mean that you don't have a great product. So my answer to you, and the short answer is, go after Dix. If they say no to you, don't even think about it. It's got nothing to do with you. It has to do a lot of times with just the fact that everybody, all of your competitors are contacting them. They've seen everything. They can be kind of stuck up about what they want for that particular industry. It's just, it's just like that. And maybe go after all of the other retailers that your competitors are not necessarily thinking about. Who else sells sporting goods products? That's the angle. That's how I made so much money over the years uh, for the manufacturers and so forth as a manufacturer's rep. I never went to the main players that everybody else went to because I knew I was going to just get hammered. And I'd, it'd be such a small opportunity compared to all the other places because all my competitors were so focused on them. I went back to them and of course I got into those stores, but I went the back roads and the way to make real money is to find all the retailers who sell sporting goods that your competitors might not be thinking about and reach out to them first and then go to Dick's. But you could do whatever you want, however it is, just don't get emotionally tied to what happens in that initial contact. So Target sells sporting goods, Walmart sells sporting goods, all these other retailers, a lot of uh, you know different Companies are selling sporting goods, maybe ones that you never even thought of. Those are the best ones to start with. So really, at the end of the day, all I'm really saying to you is look at Dix, see if it makes sense for your product, you know, um, go after them. And if they say no to you, don't take it personally at all and go after maybe other retailers who are similar to your, who already sell similar products. Start with them first, go back to Dix, and then ultimately get that larger chance to order because you know, if they have that many stores they're responsible for, they can make you a lot of money. Millions and millions of dollars is possible with Dick's Sporting Goods. So um, if you want to learn more, because this is just a small training video on this particular topic, we actually have a 90-minute webinar that is coming up. And all I have to do is click on the link below. And essentially, it's free. And it'll walk you through exactly how to approach, pitch, and sell to retailers like Dick's. And again, just click on the link below. You even have a replay option if you can't go to this particular upcoming event. Um, just so you can take a look at what we're up to. Um, and we'll give you value and I'll have some time with you to explain that. Otherwise, subscribe, like. If you like this information, please comment below. We'd love to support you. Just wanted to give you some little things to think about in regards to Dick's Sporting Goods. This is Karen Waxman, Retail MBA. Thank you so much for your time.